where she was awarded the Indiana University President's Diversity Dissertation Fellowship. Dr. Khadija Z. Ali Coleman is a cultural curator, community organizer, nationally recognized speaker, writer, and playwright. She is author of the children's book, Moriah's Maracas, and co-editor of the book, Homeschooling Black Children in the U.S., Theory, Practice, and Popular Culture. She is also the founder of Liberated Muse Arts Group and the executive director of the Hurston Wright Foundation based in Washington, D.C. Dr. Williams Palfer and Dr. Khadija Ali Coleman will be giving a joint presentation. The title of their paper is What is Our Inheritance? Tracing the Evolution of Black Writers Through the Work of the Hurston Wright Foundation. Doctors Williams Palfer and Ali Coleman, you may begin your presentations. Hello, everybody. So me as the newly minted executive director of Hurston Wright Foundation and my colleague, Kim Williams Pulfer, um, assigned as the research and evaluation manager, aim to understand the long history of Hurston Wright and its longstanding commitment to supporting black writers since 1990. In 2021, we began to analyze the feedback from evaluations submitted by participants in workshops offered over the last three to five years by the Hurston Wright Foundation. We also sent out surveys in 2022 to former workshop participants to garner feedback on their experiences. One workshop response immediately stood out as significant in our early assessments of writer feedback from recent workshop evaluations. The writer remarked that by engaging with a recent Hurston Wright Foundation workshop, they were compelled to consider, quote, what exactly is my inheritance, end quote. This was a question posed about my work, but can be broadened into a question of Black poetics and writing. What is our inheritance? What has the world offered us as writers and what do we have to offer the world as writers? This weekend proves that we have much to offer each other, our communities and ourselves, end quote. The writer's reflection highlighted the theme of individual and collective inheritance of black writers and the role that Hurston Wright continues to play. The quote immediately centered our interest in this project. And we wanted to understand how founders Marita Golden and Clyde Melkelveen who will also be referred to um, as Baba Kojo, that is also his name, established a national and global space for Black writers to support, celebrate, and nurture each other. The Hurston Wright Foundation's mission is to provide services, supports, and opportunities that mentor, recognize, and provide community for professional and aspiring Black writers. The organization's first program, the Hurston Wright Awards for College Writers, has honored almost 100 students, 30 of whom subsequently published books. Among them are Tiari Jones, author of An American Marriage, Natalie Bazile, author of Queen Sugar, and Nate Marshall, author of Wild Hundreds. The Legacy Awards, the brainchild of the late award-winning novelist E. Lynn Harris, has honored more than 400 writers since 2002. More than a thousand Black writers have taken our writing workshops since the first one in 1996, increasing diversity in the cultural community as they have gone on to create books and careers as professors, local cultural workers, and national thought leaders. Through a social justice lens, our work provides the necessary services, supports, and opportunities for Black writers seeking to publish work within a publishing industry that has traditionally failed to publish work by Black writers proportionate to their population. We also recognize that our social activism aids in disrupting systems that hinder Black writers from having access to certain opportunities, from writing residencies to participation in quality writing workshops and craft talks. This paper is a part of a broader project, but in this paper, we will first highlight some of the organization's early work within the burgeoning arts community within the Washington, D.C. area, also identify the wisdom of Black writers and the collective movements that shape their perspectives. And we will do this by drawing on archival sources, interviews, organizational data, and broader scholarship to identify how the needs, interests, and practices of Black writers have changed and persisted over time through the work of this organization. 
Established in, in the 1990s during a time of perceived mainstream publishing growth of Black authors, the Hurston Wright Foundation offers a valuable history from that period, the key issues that led to its founding and its subsequent growth. Maria and Marita and Clyde represent respectively the Black writer and the Black reader. Marita Golden's rising success as a writer prior to Hurston Wright Foundation's founding, moving in between university, cultural, and publishing spaces, was complemented by Baba Kojo's strength as an avid reader and a connoisseur of Black culture with administrative and marketing expertise. The Hurston Wright Foundation was an outgrowth of the Washington, D.C.-based group founded by Marita Golden, the African American Writers Guild. A serendipitous movement for Baba Kojo was hearing Marita Golden discussing her book, Migrations of the Heart, on the Terry Gross Show on NPR. This led him to purchase her book and reach out to her as a fellow Washingtonian and Black literary enthusiast. After collectively supporting the African American Writers Guild, it became apparent to both Marita Golden and Baba Kojo that Black writers at the national level needed increased spaces to cultivate their work in a community of their peers. In addition, Marita Golden saw a lack of opportunities available for Black writers to gain admission to MFA programs and receive relevant, culturally attuned and supportive instruction and membership, mentorship. As a result, the Hurston Wright Foundation was born. Marita Golden asserts that she made an intentional choice in naming the foundation Hurston Wright to honor prolific Black writers Zora Neale Hurston and Richard Wright and Hurston, um, excuse me, and Richard Wright. Wright and Hurston were both talented Black writers, but were often at severe odds with each other during their careers, especially in their debates about Black representation in literature. While the 1990s saw the rise of the careers of several Black writers, there were also contentions between Black men and women writers, particularly around the release of Alice Walker's book, The Color Purple. Marita saw this opportunity to highlight Wright and Hurston as an exemplar in their writing careers while also bringing them together despite their public disagreements. She notes, quote, while they were similar in their argument, they were also similar in their genius, end quote. The niece of Zora Near Hurston, Lucy Hurston, and the daughter of Richard Wright, Julia, celebrated this naming of the organization and initiated a meaningful conversation intervention that recognized the internal contentions ex experienced by Black writers, while also recognizing that as a part of uh, mm, recognizing them, excuse me, as a part of a rich tapestry of Black literary excellence. Lucy Hurston continues to sit on the organization's advisory board to this day. Hurston Wright Foundation's founding in 1990 came at a time of, perceived multi, of a perceived multicultural boom in literary publishing. What Marita Golden and Clyde McElvain saw in the experiences of Black writers resonate with Richard So's recent work called uh, Redlining Culture, a Data History of Racial Inequality in Post-War Fiction. So's research identifies a dominant myth about the perception of increased titles by Black authors via major literary publishers. Undoubtedly, and rightly so, and as history goes, Toni Morrison's work as an editor at Random House led to the increased publications of numerous Black writers, in, such as Toni Cade Bambara, amongst others. However, through new data computational methods, Richard Show shows that mainstream literary publishing between 1950 to 2000 did little to publish Black writers, as, except during Toni Morrison's tenure. So notes, that through every phase of the literary field, from production to reception to distinction, white authors exercise a distinct command over minority, right, minority authors, particularly Black novelists. During this period, so suggests that this form of publishing served as a form of cultural redlining, where many Black publishers only had the interest and capacity to publish a small and limited number of Black and other minority writers. So also notes that while scholars of Black literature would celebrate the 1980s and the 1990s as a period of boom for multicultural and Black publications, in particular, the data tells another story. In reality, it was only the publications of a few Black authors that came to represent a perception of growth. The Hurston Wright Foundation was formed to address equity gaps and create one national organization that could support and nurture the talents of Black writers, while also helping them to amplify their work to new audiences and support their passions to reach readers through publication. Clyde and Marita understood the challenges Black writers faced, first by Marita's own experiences in the field and when hearing from the experiences of other Black writers that seemed unable to crack into mainstream publishing, 
and who were not represented in the newly developed MFA programs cropping up around the country during this time. Despite the increased attention paid to Black writers like Toni Morrison, Alice Walker, and Ishmael Reed, access to opportunities still escaped many Black writers. The Hearst and Wright Foundation was based at the predominantly white university, George Mason University, in its early years due to Marita Golden's faculty position there. Despite Hearst and Wright's mission to support Black writers in particular, Hearst and Wright workshops began as being open to all racial groups. However, after a workshop session held in 1998 at St. Mary's College of California, another predominantly white institution, Black writers expressed intense frustrations about sharing their work in spaces that were integrated. These complaints led Golden and McElvain to fully recognize the importance of a workshop space explicitly designed for Black writers. Since that time, Howard University has become the consistent location for Hurston Wright writer writing workshops, with promotions for the workshops emphasizing the tagline, quote, a world of Black writers, end quote. These spaces continue to drive the work of Black artists and writers, often providing spaces of safety and development, propelling the work of art as activism during times of societal oppression and marginalization. Award-winning writer Imani Perry, during her acceptance speech in 2019 at the Hurston Wright Legacy Awards for her book, May We Forever Stand, A History of the Black National Anthem, reflected on the importance of her time participating in a Hurston Wright workshop led by Marita Golden. She says, I have so much gratitude for all the members of this community and I also want to say that there were three words that had a huge impact on my life. At the end of Writer's Week, everybody reads a section from what they've been working on and I read mine and re Marita said after I finished that it was beautiful. That was the fuel I needed to walk back into the moment of grief in my life and also to embrace the life of a writer fully. So thank you. In the beginning of the organization, Marita Golden and Barbara Kojo recognized the constraints for Black writers in the world of publishing and training and established safe spaces for Black writers to share, grow, and learn from each other, creating new pipelines of opportunity unseen and broadening the literary canon. The founders drew on the strength of various literary arts movement, including the New Negro Arts Movement, also known as the Harlem Renaissance, the Black Arts Movement, and others like the Black Women's Literature Movement and the Caribbean Arts Movement. They also drew on the rich environment of Washington, D.C. for Black artists as a foundational base for their work. These literary and cultural mo movements foregrounded the work of Hurston Wright Foundation and shaped its approach, programs, and outlook. As Baba Kojo asserts, quote, we are not broken people, we have broken stories, end quote, to highlight the work of Hurston Wright as an organization committed to ensuring the circle would not be broken in terms of Black storytelling. One of the first Hurston Wright Legacy Award programs held in 2002 featured Marita Golden's remarks titled The Hurston Wright Legacy Award Defined, where she noted that the award, quote, provides the inheritors of the Harlem Renaissance and the Black Arts Movement a way to preserve the cultural rituals that are required for the rebuilding and maintenance of our cultural infrastructure. The organization not only drew on the success and accomplishments of its namesakes, but also historical movements that propel the internal work necessary to guide the institution. For example, the foundation drew on the core debates of the Harlem Renaissance, led by W.E.B. Du Bois and Elaine Locke around the role of Black art as propaganda versus the idea that art should serve as vital for self and community expression. As a Black founded and led organization, Hurston Wright faced internal debates and continues to consider Du Bois' assertion that some Black artists view activism as not vital and instead solely focus on career set, success. Du Bois, in his piece written in, two, in 1926 entitled Criteria for Negro Art, he imagines the beliefs of these writers when he says, quote, what is the use of your fighting and complaining? Do the great thing and the reward is there. And many colored people are all too eager to follow this advice, especially those who are wary of the internal struggle along the color line and to whom the money of philanthropists and the alluring publicity are subtle and deadly bribes." End quote. The Hurston Wright Foundation also worked to achieve what Elaine Locke asserts in his 1928 article entitled The Art of Propaganda, where Locke demands that writing and craft development focus on, quote, a deep realization of the fundamental purpose of art and its function as a taproot of vigorous, flourishing living, end quote. In particular, Hurston Wright Foundation 
writing workshops focus on intensive instructional support guided by affirming but also notable Black writers well-versed in the craft of achieving literary excellence. While often in public disagreements during the Harlem Renaissance, Zora Neale Hurston and Richard Wright asserted the importance of Black writing as truth-telling and Black writers learning and sharing from each other via the two authors' public advocacy writing. Hurston, in her 1959 article entitled Would, Publish what, Would White Publishers Won't Print, laments the silencing of minority voices from the literary canon that marginalize or oversimplify Black and other minority writers and experiences, and that, in Hurston's opinion, established a, quote, gap in national literature, end quote, that was, quote, detrimental to world affairs, end quote. Wright, in his 1937 piece, Blueprints for Negro Writing, advocated for Black writers to work collectively to fill these gaps, noting that, quote, when Negro writers think that they have arrived at something which smacks of truth, humanity, they should want to test it with others, feel it with a degree of passion and strength. Writers faced with such tasks can have no possible time for malice or jealousy, end quote. Hurston and Wright's perspectives embody the work of the Hurston Wright Foundation as an institutional space where Black writers could fill those gaps through their efforts and collective commitments to enhance their craft, thus broadening and enriching the national story. The Black Arts Movement and other movements like the Caribbean Arts Movement between 1966 and 19 through 1972 also provided a foundational platform for the organization's development. The Black Arts Movement in particular started as the cultural arm of the Black Power Movement and at its height ran between 1965 to 1975, focusing on the idea of Black nationalism through arts and culture with regional contours and color. In particular, the themes that highlighted the centrality of African-American culture and Black self-determination informed the work of the Hurston Wright Foundation. New Jersey-based writer Amiria Baraka, co-founder of Totem Press and the literary magazine Yugen, is credited with starting the Black arts movement and inspiring groups of literary, visual, and performing artists to start their own organizations. However, John Smethurst, in his work entitled The Black Arts Movement, Literary Nationalism in the 1960s and 1970s, notes that it was the Midwest that was highly responsible for a model of institutional building for African-American artists during this time. Organizations such as the DuSable Museum in Chicago and the publishing presses of Third World Press, founded by Haki Matabudi in Chicago, as well as Broadside Press, founded by Dudley Randall in 1965, which later merged with Naomi Long Magic's Lotus Press in 1972, all based in Detroit. Additionally, John Smathurst notes that the importance of writers' workshops that existed during the movement, including Umbra in New York City, the Watts Writers' Workshops, the Chicago-based workshops founded by Haki Matabudi, the workshops founded by OBAC, the Organization of Black American Culture, and the workshop that Gwendolyn Brooks ran out of her home. These workshops all provided Black writers with an opportunity to meet with each other and develop their creative and activist voices, while also finding opportunities for publishing outside of dominant white publishing streams, or even denying the pursuit of a traditional literary career for deeper discussions around the meanings of art to politics, activism, and community engagement. It is also important to note that this broad array of institutions committed to the Black arts movement worked in various ways, ranging from direct involvement with cultural nationalism to indirect support of these kinds of organizations, while also supporting alternative spaces that did espouse the principles of the Black arts movement. Hurston Wright Foundation drew on these themes of self-determination and the promotion of African-American culture and a Black aesthetic. As Baba Kojo notes, quote, the Legacy Awards provided an opportunity for Black writers to nominate and identify the best of Black literature amongst themselves, end quote. The organization also offered a broad tent to support writers interested in diverse perspectives and cultivated an open space for Black writers to discuss craft, politics, activism, and literary career advancement through its workshops. Even beyond the end of the Black arts movement, the 1980s through the late 1990s pulsed with artistic and social politi political energy that gave rise to cultural mainstays. Clyde McElveen, who like Marita Golden and myself, <laughs> was born in DC, um, but had left the city as a child, but returned as an adult in the late 1980s. Upon his return, he encountered a flourishing Black arts culture and consciousness that influenced his embrace of his later renaming as Baba Kojo Owusu by Marimba Ani, former SNCC member, anthropologist, and author of the seminal work, Urugu, an African-centered critique of European culture thought, cultural thought and behavior.
Baba Kodro and Marita Golden started Hurston Wright in the midst of the country swapping political allegiances after an era of Reaganomics while reeling hard from the hit of a crack epidemic. Coined Chocolate City and led by Mayor, Mayor Marion Barry, Washington, D.C. had become a cultural stew of local kinship, pan-African consciousness, and a predominant Black presence with sensibilities that spanned various social economic backgrounds, cultural identities, and political affiliations. D.C. in the 1980s to 90s was a vibrant scene for the arts, including music, visual art, literature, and dance. The homegrown musical genre of go-go music, was and um, being showcased in mainstream films such as Spike Lee's film School Days, while Black writers like Trey Ellis and Marita Golden were garnering national attention for their work. DC-based filmmakers like Halle Jarima were being herald heralded, while African diasporic dance and drumming were common fixtures in DC parks and venues because of trailblazers like the late Melvin Deal. Because of these many elements, the vestiges of the Black arts movement persisted beyond its official conclusion. Key institutions included um, in Washington, D.C. included independent schools like Nation House Watoto Shule, bookstores like the Drum and Spear, and Sankofa Bookstore. Howard University also played a central role in linking Black diasporic writers. While the Caribbean arts movement's founding occurred in England, Smethurst notes, the decolonial de spirit of the times infused Howard University, located in the nation's capital, with its numerous embassies that allowed African American, Caribbean, and African students to engage in cultural programming that focused on anti colonial themes while also extending an African di diasporic aesthetic. As a result, Howard University, as John Smithhurst also notes, became a quote, locus of locus of left and pan-African internationalist influence, end quote. Marita and Baba Kojo established Hurston Wright Foundation as an outgrowth in that rich milieu, milieu, especially when they recognized that writers still needed a space within DC and eventually beyond. Marita Golden acknowledged the rich tradition of the Black arts movement and subsequent years leading into the 1990s in her written work specifically in a piece included in an edited collection of speeches from the fourth National Black Writers Conference at Medgar Evers College at the City University of New York. This collection was titled, Defining Ourselves, Black Writers in the 1990s. In her piece, Marita writes, the assertion today that today's black writers have discarded the political and racial concerns that dominated the literary work of our literary ancestors is just plain wrong. Of course, our work is a continuum, conscious and unconscious, from Zora Neale Hurston to Alice Walker, from James Baldwin to Randall Keenan, from Chester Himes to Walter Mosley. Here, Marita's view suggests that the 1990s Black arts renaissance drew on the collective strengths of previous ones by widening the cultural diversity within Black culture and illuminating the fact that Black people are not a monolith. It is in this context of both history and the present that the Hurston Wright Foundation was founded to continue to meet the needs and interests of a diverse community of Black writers. Black literary organizations like Hurston Wright continue to enhance the field of Black literature through our understanding of the complexities of our roles as both a service and support to Black writers and a climate changer for the world at large. Black culture lays the blueprint for mainstream culture. Black literary organizations pull women, self-taught writers, LGBTQ writers, and multi-genre writers from the fringes and into communal spaces to workshop their writing, present their writings through readings, and polish their writing for publishing. We embrace writers who may not have an MFA and who may often experience a writing workshop for the very first time when participating in our programs. Inclusion is the pathway to respecting the diversity that exists within our Black writing community. While fostering a sense of inclusion, community is born. In a recent episode of the Hurston Wright podcast, The Black Writers Studio, Marita Golden shared with me that writing workshops are important opportunities for her to be able to connect on a soul level with other humans. This admission reflects the intentional effort to create community among Black writers through workshops and the emotional benefit of such connection. In a 2003 interview with The New Yorker, famed writer Toni Morrison shared that finding time to write was a challenge that she had to push through. She said, quote, I stole time to write. Writing was my other job. I always kept it over there, away from my real work as an editor or teacher, and real in quotations. 
end quote. Her plight easily describes the experiences of many Black writers who don't have the opportunities to de devote to writing without the burden of lack of time, economic freedom, and privacy. Black literary organizations like Hurston Wright help Black writers con convene, encourage one another to write, and learn strategies to prioritize their writerly life. In conclusion, as the new executive director of Hurston Wright, I view my role through the lens of experience as an arts administrator and my upbringing as a Washington DC native. I come to the table influenced by having created and presented my own literary art within DC in the, within the DC area for over 30 years as the founder of Liberated Muse Arts Group, a founding member of the theater company, The Sarke Project, as a singer, songwriter, playwright, and creativity coach. I find a sense of home within an organization dedicated to supporting black writers. To continue the work begun during the early years of the Hurston Wright Foundation, while remaining relevant to the needs of contemporary writers as executive director, I've determined that we must not lose sight of the political and social impact that Black literature has had on the Black community, specifically in the world in general. By not losing sight, it is imperative that the work of Black writers at all stages of their writing careers are given the services, supports, and opportunities necessary to create their work and connect with their reading audience. The Hurston Wright Foundation, as a long-standing Black literary arts organization, offers a rich repository for learning from the collective experiences of Black writers committed to the process of artistic advancement, cultural survival, and social transformation. Thank you very much. Thank you. Dr. Khadija Molly Coleman and Dr. Kim Williams also for your presentation.